hi guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is monica Agbo, and i upload to instagram and lifestyle content on this channel in today's tutorial i'm going to teach you how i made this pan trousers with some ruffles at the down part let's dive into this tutorial together so for this particular trouser we're going to roll out your starting point this part i'm going to measure out three inches To the end of your pattern paper so the next thing you want to do is to connect these points together by this trousers is going to have a band i'm making use of two inches for the band so my measurement is going to start from two inches so i'm going to mark out my hip line my hip line is 10 inches i'm going to mark out my crotch line which is 13.5 so the next thing you want to do is to roll out the line like this So on this point, you want to mark out your hip measurement. You do the same thing for this point and on this point. So I'm going to mark out my hip measurement on this line too. I'm also going to do the same thing on the crotch line. So the next thing you want to do is to connect these lines together like this. This is the waistline. This is the hip line. And this is the crotch line. So on the crotch line, you're going to input your lap measurement. And my lap measurement is 30. And I'm going to divide it by 2 and not 4. Please note. So mine is 30 divided by 2. That's 15. So I'll just, so I'll just connect the line like this. On the waist measurement here, I'm going to come, I'm going to mark out half inch like this. And from this point, I'm going to slant it to this point, like this. And from this point, I'm going to mark out half inch again. And I'll slant it to this point. So the next thing you want to do is to, is to mark out your crotch line, like this. You can make use of a curve ruler to make it easier for you. So this is the line we're going to follow. I'll be making use of 10 inches for the ruffles. So my full length is 46 inches. So 46 inches minus 10 inches, that is 36. So from this point, I'm going to mark out 36 inches. And roll out the line like this. So the same measurement I have here, I'm going to input it here. So I'm going to mark out 15 inches. Then I'll connect the line like this. So on the waistline, I'm going to mark out my waist measurement like this and add extra one inch allowance. Then I'll connect it to the hip line. The next thing you want to do is to take out three inches here. Yeah and three inches on this side and i'm going to connect it to the crotch line like this i'll do the same thing for the other side this way please ignore these lines and we're following so I'm going to come up by one inch like this and slant it to this point this way and i'll do the same thing for this side so so please watch carefully as i'm cutting so you know the line to follow this is the front pattern if you want to put that is optional but i'm not putting that for these trousers so this is the front pattern of the trousers so i'm just going to place it on my pattern paper like this for the back pattern so for the back pattern the back is usually bigger than the front 
So what you want to do is to, if you are a size 4 to size 8, you can make use of 1 inch. But I am a size 12, so I'll be making use of 1.5. So I'm going to extend it like this. And I'm going to slant it to the waistline this way. So to get the crotch line for your back pattern, you're going to mark out your hip line. Your, whatever you have on your hip line, you divide it by 2. Mine is 5.5. .5. So from this 5.5, .5, I'm going to mark out my initial hip measurement. This way. So this will serve as my new crotch line for the back allowance. Following this line, it's going to be like this, right? But because you want the back to sit perfectly, you come out by one inch or half inch. Then you connect it to your initial crotch line. So this is going to be our new crotch line. So the next thing we want to do is to mark out one inch allowance. So I'm going to mark one inch allowance like this. And we're going to stop on the hip line. So it's going to be like this. I'm going to give it a square shape. So from this point, we'll connect it back to this initial point. This line from this point, I'm just going to trace it this way to meet the crotch line for the back. So, the next thing you want to do is to mark out is to add your allowance, and the allowance I'll be using is 1.5 inches allowance. So, you mark it down. I'm going to connect the allowance to the crotch line like this. Then I'll connect it to this front pattern, like this. So your back pattern should look like this. So I'll be making use of this fabric for the trousers and it is a daughter's material. So I'm going to use this pattern to cut. I'm going to use this pattern to put it on the fabric. So your trousers should have two pieces and the back two should be two pieces. So like I said, you should have two pieces separately after cutting it. So the next thing you want to do is to cut the pockets. For the pockets, you're going to place it like this on a fold and you measure out the width is going to be 8 inches. And the length is going to be 12 inches. So I'm just going to cut it out. So for the second one, because the, the trousers is going to have two pockets. I'm just going to place it on the fabric like this and cut it out. But this is the front pattern. So you can see right side facing right side. Then you take half an inch and stitch it round. The thing to do is to fix the pocket. So I'm going to teach you guys how to fix the pocket. So after stitching the crotch depths like this, these are the pockets. So what I'm going to do is to measure out. I'm going to be using three and a half by seven inches. I'll do the same thing for the other side too. Three and a half by seven inches. From this point, you measure out seven inches. From the front space, I'm also going to mark out the same three and a half by seven inches. I still want to do. 
is to take it this way. As you can see, this is where this is the pocket area. So you're just going to fold it like this and iron it. You iron it out. You do the same thing for the other side. You do the same thing for the pockets too. The reason why we're ironing it is because we want to see that ghetto line effect. So for the pocket, as you can see, this is the ghetto line effect that we're trying to do. And also it's on the trousers too. You can see it. So you're just going to take this pocket like this. As you can see the ghetto line. Then you place it on the trousers. Just make sure you pin it. Because this duchess is very, very light. So I'm just going to follow the line like this. But you have to make use of the aiming gun. So as you can see, I've already sewn it with the aiming gun. So I'm going to place it and flip it over to the right side like this. You can see. Like this. Make sure the line is like this. Then you iron it. By the time you iron it, this place is going to be firm. So after ironing it, this is what it looks like. So on this side of the pocket, I'm going to measure out that same three inches by seven. This is the pocket, so I'll just place it like this and I'll pin it. I'm making sure that the I'm making sure that the pocket is well placed and seated on the fabric. So the first thing I will do is to stitch this place so I can secure it like this. So for this part, I'm going to just to stitch this area. So this is the pocket, you can see. My hand can enter. So I'll just flip it over to the wrong side like this. Then I will stitch it this way. And I'll stop here. So I'm going to start from here, stitch down to this point. So the method I used to sew this pocket, this is what I'll use to do the second side. So this is what it looks like after I've already made the pocket, as you can see. So the next thing I want to do is to place the back piece on it and stitch it. So I already went ahead to stitch the crotch line of the back like this. So remember that part that has like a square shape, I left it open because that's where I'm going to fix the zip. So I'm just going to place it like this and pin it. So as you can see, I've already pinned the side of the trousers, both sides. So I'm just going to take one inch and stitch it to the down part of the trousers. I'll do the same thing for the second side too. So after sewing the trousers, the next thing you want to do is to measure out your waistline. I have 39 here. So I already went ahead to cut out the band. I made use of 41 inches. It's better to leave extra allowances for the band. So I used a soft stay, then I folded it into two, then took half an inch at both sides and ironed it out. On the wrong side of your trousers, you're going to take your band like this. Take it this way, then stitch it round, follow the line, the half inch ghetto line. Then when you sew it round, you flip it over to the right side. It will look like something like this. Then you just stitch it. Make sure the stitch is very neat and very close to this part. So I already went ahead to fix the band. And after fixing the band, I went ahead to fix my zip. You have to make sure that this line aligns. So you can see mine aligned. So the next thing I want to do is to take the down part of the trousers like this. 
then you measure out what you have around. So when I measured out whatever I had here, I got 41. I got 41. So I'm going to multiply it by 2.5. So you remember we took out 10 inches. But when I measured it from the upper part, it was giving me 34 instead of 36. So that would be 46 minus 34. That's 12. So 12 plus I had extra like 3 inches. So that's 15. So that means the length of my the length of the strap is going to be whatever I got here. Mine is 41. That will be 41 times 2.5. Then the width is going to be 15. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's only fold, only fold. So I will go to this side of the strap and I'm going to loosen it. Not everything, I'll just lose it probably from this point to this point. So that is what I'll use to flip this strap to the right side i'm going to iron on this side and make it lay very flat as you can see and then this opening part this opening part it's going to be like this so i'm going to put hemming gum and close it with the hemming gum like this then i'll use the iron to close it the iron is going to melt the hemming gum so i'm starting with the first leg the next thing i want to do is to come up by two inches like this so the part i'm marking that is where the plate will start from so this is the drawing is right so i'm just going to place this side this way so i will end up plating on both sides together so it's going to be like this i'm just going to start plating like this 